Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the different engineering classes you'll actually use and benefit from. So let's get started. I just wanna start off with hello to all the new viewers and also welcome back to those who have seen uh, my previous videos or are subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't done so, um, please, please, please hit that subscribe button down below. Um, I'll very much appreciate it and it'll also help this video get more views and hopefully help others who are interested in engineering and majoring in this area. I'm gonna start off with the fact that a lot of students, especially myself, don't really see the point in taking these college classes. A lot of the times, uh, these students are right and you don't really use a lot of the knowledge you learn in college in your day-to-day -day life. Um, as you know from previous videos, you have to have the experience and you do have to have the knowledge in like a particular area, especially if you're a specific uh, job type. So I'm just gonna go over the classes that personally for me have benefited me the most and the ones that I have actually used um, as a full-time computer engineer. They're basically all of the programming classes, so intro to programming, intermediate programming, and then all of the upper level classes that are specific towards software engineering. So uh, networks, uh, computer architecture, software engineering, um, as well as operating systems. And then I think the last one would be optimization. I don't know the name of the class, I still can't remember it, but uh, it focused on optimizing, you know, uh, problems and how much time does that take? So does it take n time? Does it take um, n plus one time or n squared? That ends up being very helpful later on, especially if you're heavy into programming and you end up becoming like a computer scientist, for example, you want to be able to optimize your code. Um, but those other classes, they're all upper division classes and those are all the ones that I took after I decided to uh, go down the software engineering track. So initially you have the choice of like, okay, what engineering degree do you want? And I chose computer engineering. And then later on during your sophomore, junior year, you get asked, okay, well you chose computer engineering. Do you want to go down the software track or the hardware track? And then depending on your choice, you'll be taking those specific classes. So pretty much all of the classes except for programming um, are the ones that I took because I chose to go down the software engineering track. Aside from those ones though, there are probably two that ended up being helpful and those were circuits and digital logic design. And you may be thinking, circuits? Why circuits? Circuits suck and I don't ever use it and I don't see the point in learning it. Um, well, the reason why you'd probably wanna know circuits and actually pay attention in class is because even though you are probably not gonna be building circuits. It'll still be good to know how the computer itself operates or how the microprocessor works and how you're able to get it working and running. And just be able to know the general sense of, you know, what a resistor is, what a capacitor is, um, and how the voltage flows through a basic circuit. Like that's all you need to know. You don't need to go into um, very complex circuits. I don't think you need to learn that personally, um, but that's me because I never actually need to know that. But um, just knowing the basic understanding of how circuits work is very helpful, especially if you are, you know, always going to be working on the computer or working on um, the hardware, you know, if you're going down the hardware track. But digital logic design is actually for both computer and electrical engineers because it focuses on, you know, the ones and zeros, the operating system, all of the commands that are required to make a particular software or hardware uh, work and, you know, tell it what to do. I think having just a basic understanding of that is also very, very important because like I said, you will be working with the computers and the hardware. But those are the core classes that I found the most benefit from. And it makes sense because these are for my degree and that specific field that I wanna major in. So it makes sense that the classes I'm gonna take junior and senior year are the ones that I actually need to learn the most from and I'll be using in my job. Um, now there may be others who say, okay, well, that's a load of bull. I, I've never had to take any of these classes and if I do, I don't have to use them in my current job or I don't think I'll have to use these classes in my current job. And you're right, I majored in a specific area so you may have majored in electrical engineering and you decided to major in satellites or signals and systems, then you'll definitely need to know about signals and systems in that class. Um, and again, it varies person by person, but specifically for me, these are the ones that I benefited from the most and I should have you know, learned the most from instead of having to go back and, and relearn it all. But the classes that I know for sure were kind of useless and that I just wanna touch on them real quick 
are basically all the other ones I didn't mention in your freshman and sophomore year. So basically algebra one, two, calc one, two, three. I never needed to know any of that. Um, any of those math classes, I took a discrete structures class. I, I don't use that. I don't know why I needed to learn that. Um, I also took a probability class for engineers. Again, I have not used it at all and I don't think I ever will be using it. And if I do, I could always just look it up on the internet. Uh, a couple other ones are matrices. I, uh, maybe if you're analyzing output data, then that would probably be helpful for you. But for me, I didn't. I don't analyze data. My job does not involve me analyzing any sort of data. And if I do, it's very um, basic analyses. And if you're someone who does do that, then um, you know, of course, learning about matrices and also learning about the uh, different types and formulas to analyze the data is important. And then a couple others that I've never used and I think are pretty useless are instrumentation. Um, that's where you make and build the circuits on like a breadboard. It was more of an interactive one to two hour lab that I had uh, once a week. And not only did I not like it, but I didn't really learn anything because I had a partner who did most of the work and I never ended up needing to use that because I don't, I don't build circuits. I don't need to build a circuit. I have no work that requires that and I don't ever want to do that. So that was pretty much a useless class and I, you know, I would have been fine if I would have just skipped it. I also took chemistry one, again, useless. <laughs> I didn't need to take it. It was a science elective and I just took it because I thought it would be pretty, pretty straightforward because I took one in, in high school, but it actually was pretty difficult and I didn't like it, and um, but I passed and I ended up not using any of the information. In summary, basically all the classes you take uh, junior and definitely senior year of your degree are the ones you'll most likely be using when you graduate and when you start your new job. All of your freshman courses and then most of your sophomore courses you will not be using or needing or anything. So I mean, at the very least when you're a freshman, you can just try to get through the classes by either you know searching up the answers, getting help from friends, but don't put too much effort in trying to actually learn all the material and retain it because more likely than not, you'll never need to use it. Um, of course, you know there are those who will probably be using Calc 1, 2, 3, or they'll probably be using differential equations or probability, um, but most of the time you will not. So it's just something to keep in mind and a, the very end of the day it really just depends on what you decide to major in and what job you get it's another good reason why you should get an internship so you can see what actual work you're doing and then focus your studies in that area if you actually like it um, and you can focus on those classes a lot more learn a lot more from not only that class but also the professors so you can be that much better of an employee and do the work successfully so yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I hope you found it helpful and useful. And if you, if it ends up being too confusing or uh, too much information, let me know in the comments below and I you know, will try to avoid making a video like this. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video and thank you for watching, bye.